to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution so in today's video we are going to be talking about the celibacy abstinence intercourse outer course no sex all sex basically you're not getting sex you're not getting sex you're not getting sex i'm not getting sex we're not getting sex <laughs> a little bit of a disclaimer before i get into this video i am going to be blunt i'm going to use the word penis and vagina i'm not going to like you know the cookie monster and you know the electric rod like i'm going to be blunt about what i'm saying so as you're watching this please be prepared for me to be i guess i don't think it's vulgar actually like, I, I don't think, I was gonna say be prepared for me to be vulgar, but it's not vulgar. Why do we think that using the correct terminology for things is vulgar? It's not. Anyway, I'm going to be pretty blunt, and of course, I'm speaking on things that I have researched and that I've come to know. I will not be covering all the bases. If there's anything that I've left out, please comment down below. If there's anything that you have a counter opinion on, comment down below. So I don't know how many of you know this, but I have actually been celibate, like, you know, all my life. And let me tell you something, if you wanna be the biggest loser in the room, tell people you don't have sex. <laughs> so without wasting too much time, let's get straight into it. I wanna start this video off by giving some definitions first. The definition of the word celibacy is actually when someone makes a vow to refrain from sexual activity and or marriage, which can be for a certain period of time or for a lifetime. So you may find that a priest or a nun may take a vow of celibacy basically saying that for the rest of my life I'm dedicated to God, I will not have any sex, I will not have a husband. Now let me tell you something, if that's the definition of celibacy child, whoo, I am not celibate. So the word that we use interchangeably with celibacy is actually abstinence. Now abstinence comes from the word abstain which ultimately means to refrain and to keep yourself from sexual activity. This can be partial abstinence or full abstinence partial basically is when you still have outer course now outer course is when you do not have sex so no penis in vagina but you do do other things such as masturbating uh, like with each other or I think by yourself to be passionate kissing touching dry humping that kind of stuff so that's partial abstinence and then total abstinence is when you fully do not do anything at all people who take the root of total abstinence those are people who are seeking chastity or to be chaste these are people who keep themselves from all sexual activity everything for the sake of purity now for those who are abstinence because of Christianity you may find that um, they're not having penis in vagina sex but they are doing other things and I was speaking to a friend of mine who once said just because it isn't sex doesn't mean you're pure doesn't mean it's purity and that was actually so deep so yeah people who are chaste are people who try to control their thoughts and again nobody's perfect so you may try to control your thoughts but they will they may be times where you find yourself slipping and you have to whoop lord please help me because i'm a sinner um but you try to control your thoughts the things you watch uh places you take yourself basically you seek to be entirely pure until you are married abstinence is for a period of time unlike celibacy which can be a lifetime abstinence is for a period of time it can be until you're married it can be you know whatever your marker is and since i defined outer course let me define intercourse intercourse is penis in to vagina sex going into some of the reasons why people choose to be celibate or abstinence oh by the way I may use the words interchangeably I know I just define them but sometimes you know the word can just slip out but I'm gonna try I use the right word one of the most popular and obvious reasons for people abstaining from sex is religious purposes so you may find that people who are Christian Muslim Jewish may decide to keep away from any sexual activity until they're married because that's what their religions require of them not every single person who follows those religions does follow abstinence or celibacy and I'm not too sure about other religions so I'm not going to speak about them the next possible reason is moral code there are some people who are waiting until marriage not because they're religious some people may not even believe in any God they may be agnostic or atheist but they still wait until marriage for sex because it's just a part of their own moral code so basically it's just about what you believe in choosing not to give yourself sexually to people because you want to wait for the one whether it be for sentimental reasons whether it be because you were raised that way or just because of how your morals are aligned. 
Next reason is waiting for the right person. There are some people who choose to be abstinence for a period of time until they feel like they have finally met the right person, the one for them. Some people may feel this way after a month of dating, two months of dating, uh, two years, five years, marriage, engagement, depends on the person. But yeah, there are some people who are just choosing to wait for the right person or even, which is taking me to the next point, waiting for the right time. Now, as we all know, there is no right time. Like there's no book that can tell you that definitely, definitely, definitely. On the 5th of August, in the year when there's a leap year, when the moon is at a certain position, that's the right time to have sex. There's no book that defines when the right time is. That is relative from person to person. But yes, there are some people who are waiting for the right time. The right time may be when you are more informed about sex, when you have money for contraceptives, when you feel like you as a person have developed. And this is something that I definitely believe in is that every person should have their own relationship with sex. Meaning you must understand it for yourself. Don't just do it because your man wants you to, your girlfriend wants you to, or your parents said don't do it. Your relationship with sex must not be based on other people people it must be based on you yourself your beliefs and what you want to do and where you want yourself to go speaking of having your own sexual relationship um, the next reason why people choose to abstain is because they want to get a hold of their sexual life there are some people who feel like I've actually slept with a lot of people this year or this month or I need to get it together and we all know there is also the societal pressure especially on women of body count how many men have you been with how many women have you been with yeah so there are some people who feel like I've done the most and it's time for me to abstain so that I can actually be intentional about sex and the next person I have sex with will be more meaningful or maybe they want to get a hold of their sexual life because again they've been having too much sex and want to take time to themselves and that's another reason why people abstain from sex is because they want to take time to just work on themselves their personal development their goals as we all know sex takes up a lot of energy a lot of time uh, depending on the person depending on your sex drive and I've watched some videos about semen retention and how when you keep releasing semen or something like that's life source leaving your body or something but anyway I don't know too much about that one the next point why people may be celibate actually and I think this one is not spoken about too much is people who have been sexually abused there are some people who have been sexually abused who decided to stay away from sex because they need to do some healing within themselves they need to redefine their relationship with sex and they're seeking help etc etc but yes there are some people who have been sexually assaulted who just can't bring themselves to do the act again with it. And while I'm at this point, I just want to say that consent is best, kids. Silence is not consent. Lack of participation is not consent. Meaning if someone just lets you like just do something to them is not consent. Yes, is consent. You have no right to someone's body. It doesn't matter what they're wearing. It doesn't matter how drunk or sober they are. It doesn't matter where they are. It doesn't matter if they're walking alone at night. You need consent. You have no right to anyone's body. And just remember that literally two minutes is not worth scarring someone for the rest of their lives. Another thing, tell on your rapey friends. If you are protecting your friends, you are a part of the problem. And lastly, let's not wait until women are in body bags or heavily scarred for us to believe that they have been sexually assaulted. And also, remember that men and boys can also be sexually assaulted and that their pain should not be laughed at because they are men and should have been stronger. And the last point why some people may choose to be abstinent or celibate is to manage a sexual addiction. There are some people who are addicted to sex and so in order to control this, they're like, whoa, okay, how about I just don't do it at all in order to control their urges. So the next thing I want to talk about regarding abstinence is actually soul ties. So as I said, some people may refrain from sex because they want to get a hold, a grip of their sexual lives because they've been having a lot of sex with different people and what does that mean? Da -dum soul ties now what is a soul tie a soul tie is a spiritual or emotional connection with someone as a result of having sex with them now let's talk about this sex thing there are only two ways for people to be inside of each other and of course i'm excluding doctors doing surgery all up in your guts and stuff but naturally there are only two ways for humans to be inside of each other and i mean deeply inside each other not like put your finger in my nose vibes but the first one is through pregnancy and the second one is through sex actually should sex have gone first because sex and then baby i guess you know so I, you know okay yeah anyway when you have sex with someone it is not just a physical act you physically 
put yourselves inside of them or welcome someone inside of you. And not only that, but when you are having sex, it is your physical energy, it is your spiritual energy, emotional energy. You are in your highest state of vulnerability. Sex exposes you to someone's inner dealing, some, someone's inner angels and inner demons. And some people have said that after they had sex with someone, they suddenly found themselves being uber attached to them for some reason, unable to let them go, or even developing habits that mirrored that person which they did not possess before then. That being said, soul ties can be godly and ungodly. Godly soul ties are the ones you make within marriage with your husband or your wife, and ungodly soul ties is pretty much everything else from a religious perspective and mind you soul ties don't have a limit every single person you sleep with you are forming a soul tie with them you are giving yourself to them and you are receiving them and you can imagine that receiving someone in your most vulnerable state means that you are susceptible to receive whatever energy whatever things they possess within them to come inside of you so basically to summarize this point Sperm is not the only thing coming inside of you when you are having sex. Hey! Surprise, mother Now, to actually back up that point to the Bible verse, in 1 Corinthians 6.16, it says, Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. Essentially, sex with a prostitute joins you and you become one, you become one flesh. Now this is not about a prostitute, but I mean in general, to join yourself in sex with a woman or a man means the two become one flesh. Do you know what that means? Some of the people you are busy having sex with, they don't bath, they stink. They've got weird spirits. You know, even you, you know they're weird. The dick might have been bombed, but you know that nigga weird. Are you not embarrassed? This is really embarrassing. But, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, my brethren, okay, that is not the end of the road for you. If you have a soul tie with someone, if you know that you are emotionally heavily connected with someone, you can't let them go, you see yourself mirroring their actions, etc., etc., it is possible for you to break a soul tie through prayer. If God don't do it, it just won't get done. It's gonna take a miracle from God. Okay, so I really did not want this video to be too long, so I'm going to speed through the last points. What are the benefits of abstinence, celibacy, chastity? The benefits are, number one, avoiding STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, sexually transmitted infections, and basically any sickness that can come with sexual activity. And mind you, STDs and STIs don't just happen when a penis is in a vagina, but just contact with genitals. The next point is you save on contraceptives. So if you are not having sex at at all then of course you don't need birth control you don't need condoms you don't need an IUD the next point is you don't have to worry about being pregnant I had this period right where I was not getting my period like literally for like two months honestly those were the happiest two months of my life because I knew I wasn't having sex therefore I knew I wasn't pregnant I mean sure something else could have been wrong but that's not the point the point is <laughs> I'm not pregnant so if you are heavy on that if them kids energy then I mean abstinence is a great way to prevent <laughs> pregnancy. In terms of relationships, abstinence allows you to get to know each other as people, as individuals outside of sex. We all know that when sex comes into a relationship, it can easily consume a relationship. You guys are having sex every day, all the time. You barely talk. Every time you link, it must be sex. You know, you can't just get together and talk, chill. You can't just lay in bed. You can't just watch Netflix or a movie without chilling. Basically, abstinence allows you to grow your relationship outside of sex, and that really allows you to see if you like someone for them and not just because they know how to lay down the pipe or because she's got a wop. I know that's right. Last benefit of abstinence is you avoid pouring yourself out, meaning giving yourself out to a lot of people. Again, when you have sex with someone, you are physically giving yourself, you are also emotionally and spiritually pouring yourself out. So you may find that when you find yourself having a lot of sex, a lot of sex, a lot of sex, you find yourself feeling emptier and emptier, you feel hollow, you feel like you're losing your essence. And that's because you are giving yourself, giving yourself, giving yourself over and over and over to different people. Hence, sex cannot solve any problem in your life. I don't know who's going through trouble right now and is trying to find healing in sex. Sex is not a healing agent. You will not heal from sex. And while he may fill you up for the moment, he will not fill you in your spirit or your heart. Only Jesus can do that. God don't do it. It won't get done. Disadvantages of abstinence include a limited dating pool. You 
guys yo 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 dating when you are abstinent oh my days it's possible don't get me wrong there are many people who are abstinent but it's just that it's easier for you to run into someone who's sexually active and having sex we know the generation we live in especially as young people and even older people we know the world we live in it does limit your dating pool there are literally people who will refuse to date you because you are abstinent there are people who maybe think they can handle it but break up with you because they can't handle it there are people who and i hate this one who will date you with the hopes of convincing you or persuading you to have sex with them I just want to say with this one, if you are abstinent, you don't want to be with anyone who's going to give you a hard time for doing it. And so while it may limit your dating pool, it really just filters out people who are not for you. And especially for girls where there are some guys who only hang around for sex, when he knows you're not giving sex, you avoid guys who just want to be there for sex or to abuse you and leave. So the next possible disadvantage this is a possible possible disadvantage is for people who choose to date a uh, non abstinent people when you are abstinent and then the girl or the guy will tell you okay it's fine i will be abstinent for you yeah don't do that eh, red flag doesn't work nobody should be abstinent for you it is something they must do for themselves it is not sustainable to be abstinent for someone else you might find that if you guys get into an argument or you know some couples are on and off that in those breaks they go have sex with someone else or even even if you're not in a break even if you're in a relationship you may find that they go looking for that sex gap with someone else again this is a possible disadvantage not a certified disadvantage the next one is honey baby chances are unless you live in a community where you're all abstinent and the same you will be mocked you will be teased and <coughs> that's why it's important for you to know why you are waiting it's not good enough for you to wait because your mom said so or because uh, it's in the Bible that you don't even read or the Bible you don't even believe in meaning you must have your own reason for celibacy because people will try convince you to break it or people will tease you and if you're not strong enough when they tease you it will actually convince you into having sex so that's the disadvantages you will be teased uh, and you have to be strong sometimes it really does feel like a fight uh, for celibacy because people literally just want to square up with you because you're not having sex as if it is your business what is your problem eh? enemy of progress enemy of success enemy of holiness and righteousness look at you eh? look at you anyway that is my discussion on celibacy abstinence articles intercourse abstinence chastity did i forget anything i don't know i don't think so um if you guys want me to make more videos about this topic like if you want me to talk about the struggles or some tips on how to do it whether you're single in a relationship then comment down below and let me know but until then that's it for today guys i hope you like this video don't forget to comment like share and subscribe and i will be back with more videos peace and love guys